Um, I'm Doug Penn and uh, I sell antique outboard motor parts and motors on the internet. I brought with me some examples of the kind of ignition systems you find on antique outboard motors and this is by no means inclusive but it's just representative of two or three of the different types um, that are commonly found and what we're going to do um, this time is to show you once you've established that there's no spark at the spark plug with this checker um, how you go about checking the ignition coil on these old systems now 95 percent of the time the problem oh, maybe 75 percent of the time the problem with no spark on an old motor is the coil if you have an Evinrude rowboat motor with the magneto ignition or a kale or a Lockwood uh, pre-1935 you can almost be absolutely positive that you're not going to have any spark and that the coils going to be dead but in order to affirm that what you need is to take the ignitions now you can do this on the motor or off but I chose to do it off because I uh, it makes it easier to demonstrate what we're doing here uh, this is an ohm meter that I bought at Radio Shack and if I remember correctly it cost me about 15 bucks this is what you need you cannot do this procedure properly if you're just going to use a garden variety multimeter what you need is this um, thousand I believe that's thousand ohm resistance scale and it takes a 9 volt battery and it's it's pretty common stuff but it needs to have that scale because you need to be able to measure both of the windings in these on these coils and the secondary winding is a very fine wire that requires um, uh, that particular scale now I don't know a whole lot about electronics in fact I'll admit to you that I know practically nothing about electronics but I figured out a long time ago how with the help of my friend Jim Moffat from New Hampshire how to work this and how to test coils when you turn it on that scale and assuming you've installed the battery what you want to do is zero the motor out on the um, zero the meter out on the scale and even that's not that important because what you're looking for here is continuity the fact that the wires are not broken um, to start with this is a common type of single cylinder 1930s Evinrude Elto ignition uh, magneto plate called a statter plate it has the coil the condenser and a set of ignition points very often the ignition points are gummed up and need to be cleaned but more often the coil is no good that's the coil this is from a 1939 Elto Ace but this type of magneto is shared with their engines all through the 30s in the coil are two windings a primary and a secondary circuit the primary circuit is a fat wire and it's almost always good that is the one that goes between the ignition points and the ground and if you uh, put the positive and it doesn't even have to be the red connector or the black connector as long as you're making a circuit you should get a reading and on this one we buried the needle which is what you usually do that primary circuit is almost always good um, it's a heavy wire and it's not often damaged it's the secondary circuit the circuit that goes to the spark plug wire that's usually at fault it's a very fine winding this is a single cylinder motor on the single cylinder motors the one end of the secondary winding is at the spark plug and the other is at the ground so if we connect 
the ground and the spark plug wire we will normally be looking for about six a six ohm resistance and that's what we've got here so that coil is good if you get no reading you can be almost certain that that coil is not going to work there are cases where the coil wire is broken and the two ends are close enough together inside the coil, the two broken ends, that the spark will jump. If that happens, the coil may work for a little while intermittently, but it's only a matter of time before you're going to have no spark, that coil's going to be dead. This is a common OMC ignition replacement coil. This is the garden variety coil that you can buy from Sierra and you can buy it on the internet. When you have a modern, fairly modern motor, that would be 53 or newer, up into the 70s, and you use a, find a coil like this in an engine except that the insulation is all broken off of it, you can take that coil and throw it away. There's no need to even test it or fool with it. But if you have one that looks new and you suspect that it's not any good, the way to check that, again, is to check the primary circuit with the ground and the positive wire, and you will bury the needle. That's the fat winding. That's almost always good. There's the wire that goes to the spark plug, the connector, where the wire goes and there is the ground and again you've got oh, almost seven seven uh, resistance and that's a good a good reading that coils good now we know that's good be but it because the coils new or it would be very unusual if it was not good this is an early Johnson again a single cylinder this came off of a J25 but basically, and it's also missing the points and condenser, but for demonstrating, this is not the wire you're concerned with. This particular wire goes to the stop plug. This is the positive wire. The negative um, is down here. You can see it. Um, going grounding itself to the plate so actually you don't even need to do that you can you don't even need to touch this you can touch it anywhere on the plate and you'll get a ground so again with the hot wire and the ground we buried the needle it's got a good primary circuit what it may not have is a good secondary circuit so you need the ground which is the other end of the winding and this one is good. It's got 6.5 on the scale. Now I happen to know this is good because I tested it before I brought it for this demonstration. But a lot of times these are not good. There's a breach here or there's a breach inside just where this connection goes to the spark plug wire. The secondary circuit instead of um, one end being ground goes to both spark plugs. So what you're looking for is to make sure the secondary winding in the coil is complete and not broken. So if this is good, we'll get a reading, and if it isn't good, we'll get no reading. And we have no reading, that coil is dead. Now you've got to make sure you've got good contact, and it doesn't matter which side is positive and which side is negative, you just have to make sure that you've got good solid contacts, clean contacts, and that coil is dead. That's not going to work. The same thing we'll check with this. Here's a ground, here's a positive, and the primary circuit is good on this coil. But very often the secondary coil, the secondary winding, is no good. If you know how to check the coils, you can save yourself a lot of aggravation. There are other problems that befall these ignition systems, but the most common is bad coils.